Good afternoon. Welcome to Heart Returning from the stable studio. I've got my smiley faces on today. I've also got some other smiley faces. Here they come. Look out. We have Mark the General Wood Turner, Pete the Twisted Trees, and Joe. Hello. Hi. From your Grit. Hi, Joe. Hi, Pete, and hi, Mark. Thank you very much for coming in and assisting me with my endeavours today. That light, so I'm going to turn that light off for a minute because it's blinding me. There we go. So today we are going to turn a little box. This is kind of part of um, the challenge <laughs> for... I'll take you guys back off screen again. Get back off. Get off. Go on, get lost. <laughs> the uh, Wayne last, I think it was last Friday, and issued a challenge to everybody to hollow something out um, using sort of tr traditional tools or or uh, calibrates if you like, but not using a drill or any kind of drilling apparatus. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to make a little box out of this piece of Zabrano. Um, this is the second time I've turned Zebrano. I don't really like it. It's really it has really open capillary tubes. Like that, Mark? Well done. Capillary tubes. Um, I can actually see them, some of the capillary tubes in here, where they're kind of half cut. So, and it's very open grained as well. So I'm going to try and turn the box out of that. And then I'm going to make a lid out of this uh, scrap end piece of um, olive. So we'll see how that turns out. So this will have a little lid and a, maybe a little finny ob on it. We shall see what develops. But first and foremost, we'll get this started and uh, I'm going to try and do a little bit of reverse turning as well, just for the fun of it, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to hand you over to the guys in the chat, or the guys looking after the chat. And I'll start turning us into some kind of shape. It's not just going to be a square box. So who's going to read the names out then? Let I'll me do start. It. Go on, then, Joe. Oh, thank you. Sidney Purposin, Dan Callison, Pete for Twisted Trees. I think I need more speed. Brian himself was in the chat earlier. Oh, I'm in. Mark, the gentleman would turn us. Clean the Yorkshire Gate. We could have some tail stock support. Wood turning by Barry says, sorry, Brian, he's going to miss this one because he's got a hospital appointment, but he said hello. That's all right. Um, we've got uh, Paul Houghton, the Greasby Turner. Um, we've got Terry Bartlett, David Nichols, Flicks for Turning and Timber Creations, Doug Miller at Woodspun Round, Robo Robertson. We've got lots of Aussies in anyway, that's good. We have. Circular Wood by Key. Jennifer's Craft of Creations. Wavy Woodshed. Trevor Peter Hobby Turner. Woodland Paul. Wood Dancers. That's a new one to me. Uh, Benjamin. John S. Casting. And that is. It for now. Good afternoon, everybody. That's good. If I've missed you yeah. out. I do apologise. Good afternoon, it's everybody. Mark's so I've just. Fault. It's Mark's fault. Of course it is. Everything's Mark's fault. Mm. So basically, I'm just roughing this quickly out with a spindle roughing gauge just to get some rid of some waste wood or stock, as some people call it. So you can see this is going to be a. A slightly different shape than a normal box. It looks urn like. Well, it will be a bit like a small urn, if you like. Yep. So this is a little bow gauge, a little 3 8 bow gauge. I just like to use it. Stephen Miller has joined us, and so is Eric Winkler. Hi, Stephen and Eric. 
Howdy, everyone. We've got Terry Hooper in as well. Hi, Terry. What I'm aiming for here, guys, is if we look at the uh, we look at the uh, close up. I think might be the best picture. So I've already got this marked in here uh, for 40 mil. So I want to leave a 40 mil hole here to hollow out through, and um, basically because that fits my little jaws. So we'll see how that goes. Just turn the speed up a little bit. So that's me down to that line now. I just want to finish, finalize the shape a little bit. Now, let's just use a different gauge. It's a 3 8 spindle gauge. Just to try and get a nice finishing cut on here. Am I in the wrong camera? Trevor P. Hobby Turner has a question for you, Brian. He says, are you prepared for rust? Sorry, Joe, I didn't hear that. Am I what? Tre I'm prepared are you for prepared rust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the answer to that is yes. I sprayed the bed earlier with uh, some silicon spray. I forgot I had a tin of silicon spray that uh, I got from Record Power when I bought the bandsaw. Came with it. There's the link for this uh, Wood Dancers channel. The Wood Dancer? Wood Dancers. All right. He's only, he's only got two subscribers at the moment. So Great. Cool. All right, jump over, <laughs> jump over subscribe. there and support the Wood Dancer guys. That'll be good. We're all here to support each other somehow or other. Do you think? Four subscribers at the moment. His name is Clint. Hi, Clint. Welcome Hi. along. Hi, Clint. Hi, Clint. How are you doing, buddy? It's not bad. I think I'll just make this a little thinner. I like the shape. Reminds me of myself, really. Bit of a bulge in bottle. <laughs> I've relocated to the bedroom, so Glenn's in the living room with the television sound turned on. Oh, good. Has he kicked you out of the living room already? Well, you can hear us as well now. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering if you're trying to do a better cut on this with a skew. I think I'll try. Lawrence Brigade is in. Good afternoon, Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence. Greg, Doug, Trevor, Terry, Keith, Eric, Clint, Darren, Bravo. Sorry, I was busy. I was busy moving around the flat, so I've only just been able to sit and see who's in. <laughs> That's why you were quiet. Well, you got to look after your guests, haven't you? It's a rare treat to have Mark quiet. I had wondered. <gasps> I, I, said that. I it was very quiet last night. Very yeah, reserved, you were. You've been oh, cautious. Oh, didn't want that. That's because Kim was there. Yeah. Good behaviour. We've got uh, Ben Jammons asking Has anyone made the Cindy Drozda recess tour? Has any made the Sydney draws the what? Recess tool. Recess tool. Any no. of us online? Have no. Been? I haven't. No. no, I haven't done that. Henry Morgan's joined us uh, this afternoon. Hi, Henry. Ah, oh, go away, Brian. Keep and that Hill as well. in contact. I know. Are you going uphill there? 
Now we're going back to bow guys just in a minute. <laughs> or a spindle guys, should I say. I'm not saying he hasn't either. Ah, oh, okay. Put now away. I think it's <laughs> I think it's blunt. Step away from the skew. Step away yep. from the skew. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got all day. day. This is a hard piece of wood too. Apparently now my skew has been transformed from a tractor into a, a motor car now. An average motor car. Average motor car, because I've changed the bevel from 25 degrees to 20 degrees. But I've been told I have to go to a Ferrari next and change it to 15 degrees. Yep. I'm Got not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that either, Mark. I was using my 15 degree or my... Yeah, 15 degree this morning. I have... Uh, uh, it's set up on the, oh, the oval skew is 15 degrees. Yeah. And I was using that on my uh, light pulls this morning just as a, a half an hour's practice before I started. And it worked okay, I have to say. Of course it did. Just, the, the best. just the odd, odd catch or three, as you do. Well, we're going to go and have a play on the lathe after this. So, see what we can get Glyn doing. Not have much luck there. There's a little shear scrape here just to tidy that up. Flex oval skew is 15 degrees as well, he says. Hi, Jennifer. Well, I changed my radius skew to, to uh, 20 degrees. No, 25 degrees. No, was, uh, yeah, it was 25 degrees I changed it to. Yeah, that's, that's just, that's a brick. Yeah, that's that's just cheating. According to Pete, that's just cheating, so. <laughs> that's it, that's all it's getting. I need to look at that and make sure there's no spiral mark in it now. Ben Jarman says it takes exactly 10,023 <laughs> hours to master the skew. Is that all? So we'll give us a quick sand up, guys, before we start hollowing. So the outside's finished. I'll be slowed down a wee bit, that'll be a good thing. You've got 42 people watching, Brian. Oh, thank you very much, guys. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. I think actually, Ben, you'll find that there's um, 1,322 catches built into every new skew. When you've used them all up, it's fine after that. All right, I must be fine then. I don't know why I keep getting them then. I must have, I must have a double dunt skew. That. Just uh, talk amongst yourself there while I do a bit of sanding, guys. It was not the most exciting thing in the world. Well, I was going to say how sad I was that Joe wasn't able to come down and visit. And I mean, mean that genuinely. But I'm also quite relieved that she didn't come down because I've been told what implements she bought that she was going to beat me with. Ooh. Have you been told? I may no, have been no, we, some we, we didn't discuss it at all. We so, may have been there. Uh, it's good. I can tell you exactly what I bought. Oh, no. I bought a hammer. Yeah. And a baseball Just a small bat. hammer. No, it was a big yeah. one. <gasps> a and a baseball, and a baseball bat. bat. Hey, Rob, CP's in. Hi Rob. Hi Rob, how you doing Hi, buddy? Rob. Hi Rob. Hope you're feeling better after yesterday. Where had to go on my hobbit size lathe yesterday? My hobbit size lathe? <laughs> I think you must have reduced it for Terry coming, didn't he? No, it's my fault. I, I raised my lathe by four inches. 
Um, because I haven't been using anybody else's lathe and thought, why not? But um, <laughs> it's a big difference between a standard height and what mine's at now. Well, I've lowered mine down two inches now, so it's halfway between. I'm going to tell but, you about um, running in high heels. I was really impressed with that uh, spindle gauge grind you had there, Mark. Uh, the less on, the less on grind. The less on one, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I have one of those. Really well. I have one of those. You, kinda, you set it up at 40 degrees or something, don't you? Set it at 45 degrees. Oh, 40, no, 45 degrees and then go for second hole, is that right? Yeah, so it is 45, but it's got a longer wing on it. It has a long wing, yep. Yeah. It's an interesting tool. It gets you into all sorts of places. <laughs> right, that's 240. It does look a little bit over sharp on the point, but it doesn't behave badly. No. It's really good for detail work. There's no doubt about that. Ooh, your sugar. Ah, no I sanding seal. Do your your sugar twice. Oh, Matt can drive. We've got the sanding seal. Question Wait, for Eric. So I have, I had a piece of cherry and was having tear out on the outside going in one direction. So I turned it around on the tenon and used scraper. And there was still tear out. The wood was a little bit green. Um, mm. Yeah, you, you nearly always get tear out with a scraper anyway. And if the wood's a little bit green, it's a bit softer, so the tear out's worse. So yep. cut it, don't scrape it. It's all about the supported fibers. Yep. Cutting is always better than scraping, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know something? Oh, thank God for that. No, nope. I couldn't because Pete was talking. For hands that feel pretty oh. can be soft as your face. With light brown, you're gritty. Damn, I didn't talk long enough. There's a, there's a problem too, guys, because I've done ah. it twice. So <laughs> 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 it's asking, Brian, can you repeat what you said this morning about the rabbit? Oh, oh yeah. I was up walking the, the the fields this morning, checking on the sheep and the horses. And as I walked into the sheep pen, there uh, there were three little patches of grey fur, just tiny little bits of fur, uh, lying around the place. And as I walked around the corner, I said, "Oh, there's been another murder." There you go, Shirley. And walked walked around the corner a little bit further. Oh, there's been another murder. So there was actually three murders committed in my fields last night. Or our fields, they're not my fields. <laughs> I keep saying that. But there we go. That'll do for said, George. get a clean piece of cloth. Turn it speed up a little bit, burnish that in a little bit, just to set the wax. Many years ago, David Attenborough did a documentary on rabbits. And he opened up with this little hill with all these rabbits on it. And he said... The only trouble with rabbits is they're simply just too tasty. You know, foxes <laughs> attacking them, hawks attacking them. That's true, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they really are tasty, like. Horses. Yeah, that's, why they, that's why they breed so well. Horses eat rabbits. It's a well known fact, I guess. Yeah. Malcolm, horses, horses eat rabbits. Us. Yeah, it's from the Did California you, uh, humans. Did you know that badgers oh. eat rabbits? Badgers Horses actually dig them up. The horse is actually the mortal enemy of rabbits. I thought the horse was the mortal enemy of man. I thought that was your theory. But when he can't get rabbits, that's when he starts to eat people. Oh, right, okay. Oh, Sounds like humans then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speed up a little Ellen bit. Just buff this. That's Shirley. Hi, Shirley. How are you doing, girl? Hi, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. And Darren. I've got a box of curly worlies for you. Oh, curly whirlies. I think it's a box of curly whirlies for Shirley. There's been a murder. Oh, that was terrible, Mark. There's been a murder over a curly whirly. 
I can't do it anymore. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> There's been I've another murder over a curly whirly and left at the scene as evidence was a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll get the DNA off the said cheeseburger and we'll be able to solve the murder. The Dear wee beastie. Hey, happy now. Charlie's now lying on the sofa in a quivering mess. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly think so. Same right, so there's, the there's, the there's, there's, the wood. there's the outside done, guys. That's lovely. That's so we'll beautiful. Now go for a little bit of hollowing. This will be interesting. Wow, it's getting warmer here. It's 25 degrees in my workshop, guys. Don't I, don't want to upset, to convert a moment, right? I don't want to upset you, Zob, but I'm kind of naked under this this top today. Uh, Glenn so, says, are you saying you're naked under your clothes? Yeah, uh, yep, under my <laughs> under my smoke today. No shirt on. Ah. Can I also right. say that there's an image I'll never forget because Brian actually showed us before he went live, just how naked he actually so, is. So, in order to avoid the drilling with a drilling tool, such as a high-speed drill bit or a fastener bit or something, I'm going to use this to produce the hole in the center. So this is just a 3-8 spindle gauge. And it needs to be dead level with the center. I just introduce it into the middle. There's a little hole there to guide it in to start with. I tip it over slightly. That's not the dead level. It needs to go off a tiny little bit. There we go. That should stop the bouncing so much. Wow. Boy, that's a hard piece of wood. And we'll just drill that in. The tool's at about 30 degrees, so it's using the bottom wing of the tool as a cutting. We'll just pull it out. We'll go back in again. So I'm just clearing the flute there, basically. There'll be some pressure on that at all. There is a lot of pressure on it. This pussy wood is hard, guys. Rubber saying the gouge is too pointy. The gouge is too pointy. Yeah, yeah well, that's you're just, that's just a grain. End on, on for drilling. That's just the grain that's on it. Glyn says, can you get a move on, Brian? I'm taking Mark out for lunch, seeing as I'm sleeping here tonight. It's only polite, lol. Cheeky, so. I could, if this wood wasn't so hard, Glenn. Yeah, I'd just... Tell him where to go. Why is I'm breaking sweat, this wood's so hard? I have been trying to find... An old forged it is a spindle gauge, but it tapers from the front end backwards. It should do. Let me just check um, the depth of that. And it's forged rather than ground. And it's absolutely beautiful for drilling drilling a hollow into timber. But okay. I haven't one yet. I've seen one once and borrowed it. It was brilliant. I'm trying to get hold of one. They're European, they're not English. But uh right. In all my travels, I haven't seen one yet. And that's about as deep as we're going. That'll be fine. Needs a little bit of weight in the bottom anyway because of the shape. So uh, we'll change gauges because that one will be blunt. It's another 3 8 bow gauge or spindle gauge. We'll just I didn't use this. That one. No, this is the last on one. So I'm just going to show you that you can do it with this by doing a pull cut. So we'll just set in the middle, pivot here, and push the handle away. Rotate the tool as you go along so as you close the flute and don't catch the wing. Closing the flute. <laughs> and that means you don't catch the wing. So that's how you do it with that tool. 
But I'm going to do it with these two. I'm going to use these with Simon Hope Mini hollowing tools. So we'll start off with a straight one and get some. You need to drop the tool rest just a fraction because it's a slightly thicker tool. And put this light on now for you. Drop the tool rest too much. Oh God, Ben's told Glenn there's a nudist beach in Butte. <laughs> Is there? Yeah. Well, I think today is only going to be empty or full of scarlet people. Thinking about burns. Yeah. So this uh, this entry hole is actually too small. Is it? So. I will, I will be enlarging that in a minute. But I'm just using it as practice for, for hollowing through a narrow hole. Yeah. Now if you look at the tool, well you can't see it from there. Go to there. The two little Allen screws are set where the, the tool is horizontal. So if I cow, uh, tilt them over a little bit, cope, <laughs> that's a good Scottish word again, scout, cope. So if I tilt it over a little bit so the screws are over here, the, the tool comes to 30 degrees. So ah, right. so I know where the, the head of the tool is or what angle of attack it has. David J. Heath has joined. Hi, David. Because I want to make this hole a little bit wider, I'm just going to use a bowl gouge, or a spindle gouge, sorry, and just make this hole a little bit wider. Uh, Darren was suggesting a good tip is to mark the handle with angle marks. You, know, when you, you can do it, yep. I've actually done that, I've, I've marked the shaft on my, on the, the, uh, the larger hollowing tool. Good work Oops. learners joined us. There we go. It's a better night. Good afternoon. It's a better size now. Let's rotate that again. Who was that? Good work learner. Good Wood, learner. Woodworm learner. Hi buddy, how are you doing? Change the camera front. Oh sorry guys. Try that one. Oh, that's good. Felicity Woodburn. So now, just to get in. right into this corner here, I'm going to use this tool here. Down. But I need to withdraw the tool rest a little bit. So it's sitting on the straight part of the bar. Don't really need it for... for don't really need it for this one. But I just want to show you it in use. Well, you're going to do some reverse cutting. So I've got it tilted over again, so it's not so aggressive. And I'm just taking very light cuts. And just trying to get a nice finish on the inside. You, you from Wouldn't It Be Nice is in. Hi, you. Hi, you. Well, I'll have to remember that, Hugh. Good afternoon.
Ron, are you going to do some reverse? I'm going to do that right now, Mark. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Just before so, you ran out of wood. Right in there. Yeah. That's an excellent view. I just say, uh, take it up a wee bit. Got some stuck in there. That's an excellent camera angle there. You can see right inside. Perfect. So, the reason I want to do some reverse turning is because I have difficulty when I get to about here somewhere. Um, getting to try to get the, the to follow the shape of the edge because I can't see it. You're either leaning away over here trying to see in and blocking the camera and everything. But if I put the lathe in reverse, I'll just get the tool in the right place first. So we'll drop that down a tiny bit. Harry's going to go back to work. That's it, yeah. So now I can, actually, I can actually see across the back of the, the piece. I can see into this corner here. Or this corner, right. but this edge of the bevel. So I'm going to try and cut that now. And before anybody asks, yes, the uh, lathe has got a grub screw in it, or the, the chuck has got his grub screw. What is the grub screw for? The grub screw uh, holds the chuck onto the onto the lathe, onto the spindle. If you don't have the grub screw, because you're running reverse, there's a good possibility the chuck can unscrew itself. Got Whilst you. it's turning forwards, it's actually try, trying to screw itself on. When you're going backwards, ah. it's actually trying to unscrew itself. There is a groove. Let me just see if I can show you that. So there's a little grub screw here. You can't really see it there. It's just on the top of my finger. And it actually goes down through. And there's a little groove at the end of the threads on the, uh, on the spindle. And that engages in it. So it can't come off. Right. That's the reason for it. And it just makes life a little bit easier to get into that back corner. Only for the people that have got reverse, obviously. Only if you've got reverse. And even though this is a, a small little piece, I'm still trying to feel for where if there's any lumps in there, so get a little cut, catch a little, engage the tool as far down as I can, and then just bring it along slowly and feel for any lumps. I think that's pretty good. So I'll stop that. Ben's got a question. He said, Brian, can you demonstrate the chuck coming off at full speed, please? Yeah, I can, I, but I'm not going to today. <laughs> Not today, Josephine. So we're a little thick just about here. Uh, let me show you that on how we are on the overhead. A little thick just about here. So we'll do a little bit more hollowing down there. Put you back on that hollowing cam. We're just up to about this this point here. Too late. Start the lathe. Got a little nub in the bottom, which I'm just trying to get rid of a bit. But I'll use my scraper to get rid of that in a minute. Oops. Got to remember that you've got to tilt the screws the other way this time. Lessen the impact of the tool. It feels better now, so we'll go with that. See how that is. Just a little bit, just right at the very end of that curve, just right here. See, so can we just remove that? 
got 50 people watching, Brian. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate every, everybody who comes in and watches. Ben's asking a question. He says, Brian, you don't seem to use the Sorby Holomaster much. Not a fan? I am, but for bigger stuff, yeah. This, this is only tiny, so that's why I'm using these uh, mini hollowers from Simon Hope. Yeah, the Sorby one works just as well, but um, this is designed for the small stuff, so I might as well use it. <laughs> after after Mark made yeah, me buy it. Uh, Pro is me. for that intermediate um, depth of following where you need extra support, but it's not massively big. Were you going to complain there, Mark? I was, because oh, you, you bought those before we entered into our tool buying arrangement. Well, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing I bought from uh, um, from Martin at the, um, what do you call that place? The wood turning shop? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I don't buy anything from Martin anymore is because his shipping costs are far too expensive. Now, back to normal turning, so forwards. And I just want to take the little nub out at the bottom. So I'm just putting my scraper in at the bottom and just lifting it up, and pushing the handle down to lift the blade up to get rid of the nub. There it is. I think that should be good. Go, go, I've got somebody at the front door. Okay. Another new tool for Pete. <laughs> Felicity is saying that watching people use carbides scares me. They look so crabby, but if she's never used one. They they can be a bit crabby, Felicity, but if you do proper presentation and just light cuts, take your time, they're actually quite good. They have their place. I'm going to use my mini, uh, my mini stick for this. Just to sand the inside quickly. Oops. Back out of there, you. That's not working very well, sure it's not. What's the best speed to uh, do sanding, or is it, it doesn't it matter? The best speed? Well, I'm currently uh, I'm currently um, running at about. Uh, let me see when it gets up to speed. That's about 540 there, because I'm in the inside. I've got a bit of stick in a little small hole, so I'm doing it quite slowly. Normally, yes, uh, I would sand between six and seven hundred. Okay. Unless you're doing real small stuff, uh, real small spindle stuff, then you can just you can, yeah. Go for it, whatever speed, really. Right, doesn't matter. Okay. It's a personal choice thing, I think. But what you've got to make sure is that if you're if you're running it kind of fast, don't heat the wood up. Obviously, the faster you run it, and the more pressure you put on the paper, the the more you're going to heat the wood up. Not taking very much to sand the inside of that, guys. That's good. I must have done a good job with the tools. That makes a that makes a change, doesn't it? Ben saying a trick from watching Cindy Drozda. Use fifty mil sanding discs with slits cut into them on a twenty-five mil sanding arbor, 
for sanding interiors yep. of small items. Good idea, that. One of, one of, one of these. Yeah. And then put your sanding. But you can, do, you can do it. Put a 50 mil yeah. disc on. Yep. And I'll show you what she does. I'll show you what she does. If I have a... Oh, I haven't got around one left. I'll just do it with a 60 grit. So you just put that on there. And the way I the way I did it is I can oh overhead. So the way I did it is just stick the and I cut it at an angle like that. Glenn says the heat is the enemy of sanding. It is. Okay, you don't want to be heating the wood up. No, particularly and and it works even worse with. Uh, so if I can get, I don't think this will go in here, but if I was putting that on the Simon Hope thing, I don't think it's, it's too small for to get in there. But you can see what happens to the paper. It kind of folds itself over the edge and you've got abrasive all the way down the side of the pad. So it works much, much better. I hope you can see that on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how Cindy does it. Uh, that's how I did it as well, but I can't get in there. The hole's too small, guys. Hence, I need to use the stick. 240. You'll notice I'm bending the end up as well there. Poke that in there, and that gets the bottom done. So the, the paper's folded underneath. So that'll do the very bottom as well. Jennifer's saying, her remark told me when sanding low speed more pressure or high speed less pressure. I would add to that and say, whatever pressure you're using, probably use a little bit less. Yeah. You don't need a lot. You shouldn't need to press hard with sandpaper. If you're pressing hard with sandpaper, you're doing too much work. Allow the paper to do the work. That's why it's designed like that. It's designed to do the work. So I'm just using my finger right in the very edge here, guys, because that's where people will stick their fingers. Just to test, see how nice and shit, nice and smooth it is. They very rarely stick their fingers all the way in. I'll just do that little edge. And if they do, they probably would turn it. If they do, they would turn it, absolutely, yeah. Just roll that edge over there a little bit. That's a bit tidier. That'll do. So we'll use sanding sealer this time. I'm not going to yours regret the inside. Let's put some sanding sealer in there. Not be turning a lathe off, so I'm quite happy sticking my finger in there now. It looks pretty good now. That's the bottom done. I'm going to leave that on there. Robert has just said, remember that sandpaper is made for hand sanding and not for power sanding. Well, that's true too, of course. Yeah. Hence, uh, hence the reason don't use too much pressure. Think about the pressure you can apply by your hand. If you're using a machine and putting extra weight on the machine as well as uh, you've got the weight of the machine to do the job, you don't need any extra pressure. It's the same with the Simon Hope um, inertia sander. You don't need to be pressing on it hard like I used to do, white knuckle airways. <laughs> <coughs> can, I remember getting told off about that a lot. Just a bit. Oh, boy. So now, I need to take the... No, I don't need to take chocolate. That's what I'm looking for, a piece of olive. Stick this on. And now we're going to try and make a lid. Close it. Wouldn't it be nice if, Brian, um, it's a gorgeous piece of Zabrana? That's a nice yeah. piece, yep. Yeah. Looks actually lovely. Even if you don't like it. 
I don't like working with it, but it's a nice, it's nice enough piece of timber. There's no doubt about that. So you won't be buying right. any in future. I, I won't be rushing out to buy it. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, it's decorative. I've got a little bit left. That I might have to make something with, but I don't know what it's going to be. Um, Glynn's uh, saying that people watch YouTube videos where the creators speed the video up of the sanding process and it gives a yeah. false impression of how long it takes. It does. Absolutely right. I always try to, I think Mark does this as well, um, when when you do speed up the sanding process, kind of start at 120 grand, whatever it is, and then jump to when you're finished at 400 or wherever you go to, um, Mark always puts a, a little caption up, well not always, but he usually puts a little caption up to say, uh, I'm one eternity later, I think it's what Mark puts up. Yeah. And I, tr I try and tell people that the sanding process takes a long time, it's not something you should rush. Uh, it's only rushed on lives and stuff because it takes so long um, and nobody wants to watch sanding. TJ Turnin's in. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. How are you doing, buddy? So I'm just screwing the face of this off with my beading important tool. Should do. I just want to make a pen in there. Turn the speed up. <coughs> and what I should have done was measured my uh, measured the space I've got. That's quite useful. But, but we'll just guess. It's more fun that way. It's useful to measure this di di dimension here and then mark it on your, but I'm just going to guess. Be a bit of fun this way. So I've made quite a big can in there, so I'm going to bring it down just a little bit and see what that do. Nope, a bit more. So I'm only using half the tenon currently. More. Try that. So that's slightly too big. So now I've got three steps in there. That one is just, right. That one, the one that the the first one I did is just about half a mil too big or too narrow. So we'll just Brian, take this one. Yes, mate. You've got a little slope on that. Then when the load running slowly, just push the neck of the vessel up against it. You'll get yourself a mark. I'll try that. So just put a little. So something like that, Pete. Yeah. Not the speed down. Drop speed down to about 500. Line it up with a little bit. Make sure it's square and just touch it up against. There you go. Now, can you guys see that? There's a little. Yeah. Just about to see it on the. Can't really see it from anywhere. You can see it. That's the main thing. There's a little mark just, just there. Try that. A little bit, tiny bit more. I did see a wood tunnel doing this before. He actually did it hard enough that it left a burn line. There we go. That's perfect where it is now. I'll just take the rest of that down to where that shiny bit is. Tiny a little bit more off of that. 
Sorry, somebody was at the door. Sorry, right, Matt. Terry's here. Terry's right, here. Yay! Oh, TJ, turning. Oh, but one of you not in here, warming. I didn't send him an invite. There we go. It's nice. It's easier if I just say, if you want tea or coffee, help yourself. Because I'll hear it on the television now. That's okay there. So I could finish the bottom of this now, just by adding a little tail stock support there, and take the bottom off of this. Um, do I want to do yeah. that? No, I do. No, I don't want to do that yet because I need that to finish the lid. Yeah. Yes. Don't That's make correct. the mistake I made. Set that back <laughs> over there. Do the lid. <laughs> um. Oh, spindle gouge again. Don't make a mistake, Mark made. No. Try not to. Come speed up again. A bit hard than there. There we go. I'll try to fire the shavings off my lathe. That's <laughs> that's a piece of olive wood, isn't it? Yeah, this is the olive wood. Yeah. Ah, your lathe's going to get rusty again. It's all good. It smells again. That's why I was trying to fire the shavings off the lathe. Like that, I think. Get rid of them shavings. Hey, if you remember the other day on Monday, I had to go and cut the bit of all the wood on the bandsaw. When I came in this morning, the bandsaw was rusty. So now I want to try and organize where I want to start this lid. I think a little bit smaller yet. But we can have an overhanging lid, can we? So we'll go a little bit smaller. I'd be tempted to have that lid up, um, the box up on the. I'd be tempted to have the box up on the lid with a bit of tail box support. So you've got it there in place to see the shape. That's a good idea, Mark. That's an excellent idea. And because, well, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter because I still have to take that off, haven't I? Put that there. Pop that up there. Just give it a little bit of a squeeze. Till you hear the first crack and then stop. <laughs> now, just before you hear the first crack. Yeah, just before you. Yeah. Hugh from Wouldn't It Be Nice is having to go. Okay, Hugh. So, Thanks for coming in, mate. See you later. See you later. Yeah, see you later, buddy. Finesse, Brian. Finesse. Try not to fall off that cut. Yeah, no. Try to be too quick. It's only five to two. Why am I rushing? Not everybody can do it in an hour. This is an absolutely beautiful wood to cut. Good. Right, I'm going to go to detail, guys, now. 
Let's find it. So I want to try and make a curve on here now. Something similar to the body. This is where I wish I had one a, a pair of those O'Donnell jaws that could keep my fingers away from that spinny thing. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, next one they are good for that. <laughs> one of those S, one of those uh, Axminster SK14s with a set of O'Donnell jaws. Oh yes. Remember, he's feeling generous. <laughs> um, David he did one of those. got a question. Um, he says, "Will there be a finial?" There will be a finny orb. That's what we're trying to do. Free. I'm off. See you in a bit, Pete. What's he got? Oh. Hi, Pete. What did Pete say there? Somebody's at the door again, I think. It's another delivery. You've got a delivery. Again. So now I have to work out what I'm going to do up here. Because currently I have no idea. <coughs> Suggestions, anyone? What you need up here? No. I think you were going to go for a bit of a finny ob, weren't you? Yeah, a little bit of a finny ob. Someone said captive rings. Yeah, there'd be absolutely no more captive rings. Take that downhill cut. And I've forgotten what you call this little bit at the bottom again. Fillet. A fillet. Oh, I could just eat steak. I think that's what I'm possibly cooking for Clint tonight. Can't you go what out fish? It? Don't cook it. Don't make work. Oh, no, it's steak. Mark. Don't be daft. I love cooking. Just because I can't eat it doesn't mean I can't cook it. Can't you eat it in little small pieces if it gets cut up? Sort of, yeah. Just, if I'm That's careful. not so much eating, it's just swallowing. About the yeah. same. Be alright, because Glenn's here in case I start choking. Well, that's true. It's always handy to have somebody sitting sitting near you with, so they can laugh at you. I'm back. Oh, thanks, Pete. We missed you there. Yeah, something wrong here. Two packages arrived. Both of them got leases in on them. Uh huh. That must be new Brian, tools for Christmas. Brian, Brian. Yes, mate. Just a word of caution. You've yes. got a big, big weight with the box end. Yeah, yeah. And you're getting thin now on the... Oh, we're at least 12 end. mils there yet. We're at least 12 mil there yet, mate. I know, just bear it in mind. Uh, yeah, got, got the idea, yeah. You tell me to take the box off, is that what you're telling me? Well, you could turn the whole thing round. Put the box in the chuck and have the lid jam chucked onto the box and work at it yes, from the other way. That's yep. a good idea. Let's do let's do that. While you're doing that, Henry's saying, Can we have the overhead camera, please? Oh, sorry. And, and also Joe's backstage. Oh, not again. Oh, God, you're going to sleep again. You're going to see me lying on my bed now. So 
So I just tried to locate that in the same the same uh, place on the chart as it was before. Let me let Joe back in. Hello, Joe. You're back again. <laughs> aye. At least There's I lasted Mark an reclaiming. hour today. He did, aye. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, let's see what this comes to the middle. Uh, Benjamin's having to leave. So what what could you, of course? Bit. I could I could tape that on there. Yep. Good. As long as the mask can take as long as the mask can take companies have given you permission not to be embarrassing. Is that I? Also, my name's not Mike Walt. Yeah, I, I'm oh, an optimist. Other I always way, start. Other way. Other way. Right. Oh, shut up. I'm an optimist. I always start without the tape and see how it goes. I'm an optimist too. Most of the time. But Mark scares love and delights at me all the time. So. <gasps> I always feel like I'm doing it wrong. Is, the tape <laughs> the tape will it. Is that enough tape? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> you only need to go around it once, man. <laughs> indeed, indeed, Mark. You're right. Right, not coming off now. We can get rid of this now. That's from real simple things that I did. Good afternoon, Baz. Hey, Hi, Baz. Baz. How are you doing, buddy? Good impression the other night, mate. Was well, indeed. It's really yeah, good to put this. a face to the name. Yeah. I have to say. <coughs> I always put a face to the arse in this myself, but. Yeah, hold on. Felicity Woodburn has got a good point. Have you finished inside the lid? Yeah. All the finishing is getting. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that'll, that'll be no then. That'll be a no then. <laughs> yeah, the lid. The lid is actually just. Um, it's just a flat. It's, it's not hollowed out or anything, so it's uh, very easy to sand ah. and add a bit of uh, sanding seal and stuff to it as well. So no biggie. Okay. Spirit, Wind, Woodstone and Burn as Jardis. Who's that? That's a new name. That's a new name. Spirit it Wind. Is. Uh, Do we have a name to go with Spirit Wind or? Have you got a, a simple, yeah, I was going to say, a simple name. I don't really want to be typing uh, in Spirit Wind all the time. Morning. But welcome Come Spirit on. Wind, so here we are. I'm guessing you might Come be. Very um, not in Canada. Canadian? Oh, another Canadian, yeah, excellent. What time of the day is it with you? Morning. Be about 10 o'clock, 10 11 o'clock. Heather is her name. Hi, Heather. Heather. Hi, Heather. Sat with a nice cup of coffee. 902 a.m. Oh, 902. Oh, quite far away then. How far behind is Lewis? Only about 10 years ago. Lewis? Lewis is always two days behind. It's two days. He works that often. <laughs> yeah. Is he four hours? I'm just okay. putting a link into Heather's uh, YouTube channel. She's got 75 Perfect. subscribers at the moment. Perfect. Anybody who uh, who hasn't subscribed, nip over there and subscribe to Heather. Once you finish watching me, of course. We haven't got much of have we? Or you can just nip over there now. Looking good for 
I have no design in mind here. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just kind of randomly taking away timber here. How tight's the fit? Relatively. Right, so you need a fairly chunky finny up to give you a, yeah, a decent handle. Yeah, that's what handle. I was thinking. The Heather fit, says the she's point enjoying you can get away with. coffee on the deck. Sorry, Pete. Well, so I was just uh, saying that the um, tighter the fit, the more chunky the finial's got to be to give you a decent handle on it. Okay. I can always make the fit a little looser. I don't. I don't particularly like uh, tight fit and lids on boxes. Florida beaded woodworkers in. Hi, Florida. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. How you doing, buddy? David Eisenhower is in as well. Sorry, David. Let's do it here. Hi, David. All right, David. Um, Heather's saying she's enjoying the sun with a coffee on the deck and we'll be heading to the workshop later for the next video. Oh, that sounds so nice, doesn't it? Just sat there watch it, watching it go by with a coffee. Yes, that's a good day yesterday, thanks. I've got Glenn and Terry from TJ Turn in here. We're going to go play on the lake this afternoon. You want to watch that dodgy fella that you've got there in your flat? Which one? Which one? Oh, two. yeah, you've got, you've got two now, haven't you? <laughs> the, the first one. I've not met the second one. So, <laughs> yeah. good luck, Mark. That'll be Glenn. That'll be Glenn she's talking about, guys. Yeah. That you're you're going to need some alcohol at the end of the day to get over it. <laughs> It's our pleasure, Heather. We're here to help each other. I've just subscribed. I don't know what happened to your microphone there, Mark, but that didn't come out very well. I'm lying on my side. <laughs> yeah, he's resting in his bed. Yeah, he's just right. Then I go on the overhead camera, I didn't somebody asked for the overhead camera and you guys never reminded me. Sorry, I was asleep. That's my excuse, Pete. What are you I was just doing? Just trying out, Joe, see what see what it felt like, you know. Alright, okay. And Yeah, I can see where you do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, the designs just came uh, to my head. This is please, it. Please, from Rob. Okay. Rob CP oh. has got a question. He says, Is it worth using Yorkshire Grit Microfine after original on Purple Heart? Definitely on. In Purple my Heart, opinion, yes. I think it would. Be. Yeah. On, on any really hard it's timber. So hard, it would bring it up. It will bring it up really, really well. Absolutely, Rob. How are, you, how are you getting on, Rob? Rob had a bit of a, a nightmare yesterday. Sorry, we couldn't stay and watch all of it, uh, Rob, but we had dinner reservations we had to get to. Paul Finley Wood turning at home. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Welcome, Matt. Rob CP says, I'm still depressed, but I don't want to bring anyone down, so I am doing awesome. Good man. Good man, Rob. Good man. That's the attitude, boy. Excellent, mate. Stay awesome. Think, of, think yourself happy. That's what I do every day. Think myself happy. Rob, you've got to make a chest piece there, Brian. 
Yeah, I'm actually, aye. Yeah. It's a little bit of a chess piece, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I was thinking more thistle shape, but no matter. Don't fall off. <laughs> Should have used a skew. Oh God, he's getting the skew out again. Oh dear. Now, Luke. Sanding. More sanding, guys. Sorry. Amy Jandrell is, is uh, joined us. Good afternoon, Amy. Hi, Amy. All the way from the, the wilderness of Oz. Is my mic breaking up a bit? Yeah, is we've it? got quite a few. Yeah, it was a little bit earlier, Mark, yeah. Good old chapper. Because they did an update. Pete Jinx yeah. suggested. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's it then. Yeah. I've never been asked to update my jabber. That's you because you haven't got it installed. Oh, I'm not bothering then. You haven't you got Jabber Direct so installed on your computer. Well, I'm not going to bother, I don't think. Baz has asked a question. I'll let you guess what. I'm, I'm a bunny yet. <laughs> Baz, no bunny. I like your fire extinguisher, by the way. It was a fair old size, wasn't it? It was. Although he didn't show us any burning tools. Didn't see any blow lamps or... <laughs> yeah, hang on, That's that okay. he wants everyone else to burn. <laughs> yeah. I think he's trying, he's trying to get rid of the competition. He's hoping everybody burns their workshops now. <laughs> I'm sure you're not, really. I'm just cutting this piece of sandpaper in half because it's too big. Oh, wifey. What's he said? Oh, wifey's he, made it onto my list. Oh, no. That's cruel. I think that'll do. Go up through the grits now. That was 120, this is 180. I am absolutely melting in here. It's 26 degrees in my workshop. Uh, that's, that's with my, my, my redneck air conditioning industrial on. Industrial fans. Unless, of course, I've turned that little fan heater onto heat by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it says it's 23 degrees outside. That's in my wood store next door, which is kind of partially open to the fresh air. So that's kind of how they tell the temperature. It's in a shady spot, usually, but open to the wind. Gas glass driftwood turner has arrived. Afternoon, guys. Hey, guys. How you doing, buddy? Just have been late. It's you're never late. You're just early for the next one. Overhead. It's overhead uh, spider. That is a, that is overhead spider. Was that, was my head in the way there? Sorry. My Wood earworms are not keeping me up to date here. Cool here. Due to sea threat, North Yorkshire coast. Yeah. All right. Where on earth are you, woodwork learner? Flipping out. I'm, <laughs> I'm melting here, she says. Maybe olive wood wasn't the best thing to make a little thinny all about. I'm sure. I think it looks really nice, actually. I wasn't so sure when we had the two woods together because I thought they looked very much the same but i'm still not sure olives ended up being so much lighter well it's so much lighter than zabrano when you've 
you've done it. So yeah, I think it's a good contrast. We'll find out. We'll find out in a minute or two. Because I have to, I have to think about taking this tape off to finish the lid. Heather said it's 21 degrees C in Ontario this morning. <laughs> the patio outside my back door, when I took a temperature reading off of that this morning, it was 42 degrees. Oh my God! Hi, Amy. Oh. That's in the sunshine. That's in direct sunshine, obviously, Pete. Yeah. It would be it would be something similar outside my front outside my door here. The sun is actually splitting the rocks out there. It's horrendously warm. Uh, hey, one thing I'm gonna try here. I don't want that not work. I'll not work. A few little radio marks on that yet, but I need to do the rest of this lid now. <sighs> should be okay sounding, shouldn't I, Mark? Darren has sent a link for Robbo's Facebook to Robbo. So if Robbo sent it to you, Darren. Uh, Baz is having to go back to the slave cave, so... All right, Baz. Advice, Thanks for coming in, mate. Yeah, Baz. Bye, Thank you, Baz. Baz. Just being a bit careful this doesn't fly off here. Yeah. Trying to keep the pressure towards the headstock. Should actually do it with two bits of paper, one on either side. Rob, I'll send you the link for Rob's Facebook page. Check your messenger. I think that should do. That's uh, 240 grit. We'll do some Yorkshire grit on it. <laughs> This will darken it down a little bit because every time it doesn't darken it down a lot, it just, but yeah. it always everything darkens wood. Enough. You can put water on wood and it darkens it a little bit. The hands that feel pity can be soft as your face. With light brown, you're so gritty. And Rob was talking about using um, microfine. Time to add some microphone to this, guys. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. Olive wood is good for a microphone. I'm going to have to uh, leave early, I'm afraid. My uh, battery on my laptop's dying. That's all right, mate. Okay, mate. Go ahead and get into your workshop there. No, I've got to go to lunch first. But I'm only buying Subway. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get Subway. <laughs> That's right, becoming guys. a habit, mister. Thank you, Take care, everybody. See you later. All right, Mark. Bye. Take care, man. Bye. Catch Looking you later. Really good. Some people are Looking just really so part time. Thank you, man. Part timers. I know. Oh, yeah. uh, really. Ridiculous. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Bye. Have we still got anybody watching? <laughs> yeah. You've yes, got, you've got uh, 51 people. 50 watching. Uh, thanks very much, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. And 72 bit, thumbs down after Joe's just saying. Oh, that's all right, though. Ah, you did, don't do. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the sign. You see that again, guys. Oh, you're he's away past Terry now, is he? Eight. Yes. So a little bit of Hampshire Sheen, high gloss, and I'll just do the whole thing again. It goes a long way, doesn't it, that? What, Hampshire Sheen? Yeah. Just lasts forever. Yeah. It's good stuff. You don't need very don't much need... at all. You don't? No. No, you just, you just don't need it. The more you put on, the more chance you've got of getting wax streaks. So if you just put a little bit on, and it's easy to recoat rather than put too much on at the beginning, and then have to worry about streaks. Right. And if you do get streaks, you can fix them by uh, using a hot air gun. Kind of melt the wax and use it at the same time and buff at the same time. And that'll kind of sort out your streaks if you put too much on to begin with. It's also good if you've got any 
inclusions or holes in the wood that the wax gets stuck in and melts it melts out of the hole. It does, yeah. It does um, indeed, Pete. Jennifer has a question. She said she thought you were putting microfine on Brian. Oh, I forgot about the microphone. Jeez. I forgot about it. In, in the two minutes that I was doing that, I forgot about it. So, there will be no microphone today. Oh, well. It's the same process, guys. Uh, sorry, I should Brian's have shown you that. Sorry. Hot, Amy. I'm bloody roasting. My brain is cooking in here. You're too warm, aren't you, Brian? I'm, I'm cooking. Yeah. I'm, I've actually got sweat in my brow, guys. That's the first time for months I've had sweat in my brow. It's going to be a crispy duck. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at that. It's good. Glenn says you're sacked. Well. Oh, I can't be sacked. I'm not even part of the <laughs> team. I can't be sacked. Mark says he leaves the room for two seconds and, and you go yeah, to no. bot. <laughs> false to bits. Yeah, the whole thing falls to bits. It's all Mark's fault. It is. Jennifer said it's because you're 86. Oh, Jennifer, you and I could fall out very quick. <laughs> Woodwork Learner is asking, what's the difference between Yorkshire Grit and Microfine? The Yorkshire Grit original, uh, that's the brown stuff. We'll take your work from sort of 240 grit up to about 1,000. And then if you use the microfine after that, that'll take your work up to somewhere around 2,000 grit. All nicely done without any, uh, without any dust. So all you really need is uh, sandpaper up to 240 couple of tubs of Yorkshire grit and you're sorted. It's not the wobble. Robert Robertson saying, geez, you lot would die in an Australian summer, lol. Yeah, absolutely, Robert. I, I almost did. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mark is now saying, me, Glyn and Terry are laughing, laughing our Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I just give that a quick rub on the line sure to get rid of the little nubbins in the bottom. You're very welcome, Jennifer. Any time I can get anybody into trouble, I'm good at that. <laughs> just bear with a second, guys. I'll he just get really organised here. That. Look at that there, look. Look at that. Look at that bit of rust. It's not as bad as last Last time, last Monday. No, it's not, but it's still there. I'm never using olive wood again. It's terrible. Let's go to your stuff. So that's the browner and olive wood you've got off your list. There we go, guys. There's the little Zebrano pot. I think that looks beautiful. Little pot with uh, made the from Zebrano, hollowed out, played finger depth, and a little olive wood lid. Which is quite a tight fit, to be honest. There you go. That's what we've made today. That's really pretty. It doesn't fall off. So the substantial little pop. You hear that? Oh. That was a woodworker's fit. So. Yeah, if you want to sell I, it, you need to loosen that just a bit. I will. I would, I would, I would never try and sell that to anybody because... They wouldn't want it. So we just run a bit of sandpaper around here or around here just to loosen it a little tiny bit. But just to prove to you guys that I can do it, <laughs> I did it. There we go, guys. Let me bring my <laughs> earworms back in. Some really nice, you're getting some nice um, comments, Brian. Awesome work from Rob CP. Outstanding job from David. Thank you, guys. Really do appreciate um, that. Doug Miller I saying, I love up. the difference and sameness of the two woods together. Yeah, so if I um, hold it up there, you might get a little better view of it. So it's a nice little pot. That's lovely, Brian. Yep. Very nice. I know, I know. Are you word, talking about Brian? me or the pot? You're talking about me or the pot, Joe? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? 
<laughs> well, you have to try, don't you guys? Nice try. Have to try. <laughs> nice try. You do have to try. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in, guys. Yes, uh, I mean, you've got... That's an hour and 25 minutes. Um, and we've done one little pot. But that's fine. I love it. I think it's a great little thing. I get my little... Uh, get my logo engraved on that, on the bottom. Do you think, do you think Michelle will like it? I think she will. Better than that, I think uh, my visitors oh, who are here today. Yeah, it's not a bowl, yeah. <laughs> and except the bowl. I think my visitors who are here today will, will quite like that too. You can't really see it though. You need a different background. And Shirley's saying you're gorgeous and so is the pot. No, thank the you pot. very much, Shirley. There you go. At least, at least somebody appreciates me. Joe doesn't, obviously. <laughs> That's quite all right. <laughs> oh, you know I appreciate you, Brian. <laughs> I know you do, Pat. I know you do. So there we go, guys. That's us. We're done. 25 past uh, two. Thank you very much for coming in. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, I appreciate it. I'm on 521 uh, subscribers now. Yay. <laughs> Should be a thousand. <laughs> Should wow. be a thousand uh, this time next year. Um. <laughs> Darn, has just, what's Darn just said? Oh, Mark, he's naked under there. I am indeed, yep. I'm naked under this top today because it was too warm. 26.7 degrees. The temperature is still climbing in my workshop. Anyway, guys, who's on tonight? What day is this? Thursday? Thursday, Keith? Yeah. Thursday. Is Keith well, on tonight? No, Steve's tomorrow. No, Keith. Keith from Circular Wood? Or, or is it... It's supposed to be uh, supposed to be um, Scott the Blue Light Turner is supposed to be on this evening. I don't know if he's standing in from tonight or not. Although uh, Scott did have a premiere he last night, be. so he might be on. Oh, Scott yeah. is on tonight. Keith just said. So uh, keep your eye on for Scott. If you're not subscribed to him, have a uh, nip over to the Blue Light Turner and see can you uh, see what he's up to tonight. Tomorrow we have uh, Wayne the Wood Turner at lunchtime. And I can't remember who after that, guys. Steve's on the evening tomorrow. Oh, Steve. Oh, it's Steve. Steve. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Of the oh, Come on, tomorrow Brian. night is Battle of the Makers, guys. Jeez, I'm still Oh, yeah, you're Sorry. on. I'm on. <laughs> Again. <laughs> With Joe. You're on. Partly That's Lewis one for Shirley, Brian. There's a lot of talking in that one. So I do a lot of talking in that one, Shirley. So come along and watch Battle of the Makers. It's on at, well, it's on late for you guys, though. It's on at uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. 7.45. 7.45 is correct, yeah. Um, yeah, it's always a bit earlier, isn't it? And we'll have we'll have a bit of crack and a bit of fun. That and, be fun. Uh, I'll try and not answer some questions again. <laughs> Spirit Wind does subscribe. Yeah, oh, we thank were, you very much, we Spirit were, Wind. Heather, yeah. that. Thank you. We were on farm uh, last time. We Scott's were. link. Can you can you find Scott's link there, um, Pete? Yep, yeah, have a look for for tonight and stick it in there so everybody knows. Uh, Robo's on a Sunday morning, our time. Good man, Robo. Well, I'll, I'll get that off my... Uh... Oh, Mars just put a link in. Who's that for? I guess Is that Scott's link, Battle Mark? of the Makers. Just... Oh, Battle of the Makers, probably, yeah. It is. On That's it. around 5 a.m. Um, Eastern... Yeah, I think that's Eastern Standard Time uh, in Oz. Done. Get up early. I mean, come on. Where's the support? <laughs> well, you know, is, is Brian doing a quiz show? So it's just for Shirley, really. Yeah, it's just for Shirley, yeah. <laughs> I might yeah. try and answer some questions. Get a few right this time. You, find you Scott's might even link? see Curly Whirly. Or Wee Beastie. All right, well, you, you never know what the questions might be. No. What is, what is Carberry's longest sweet? Curly Whirly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Spirit Wind was uh, already subscribed to Mark. Oh, right. Okay. I get the idea now. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Heather, for subscribing, kid. Appreciate it. I'm delaying here because I think uh, Pete's trying to find Scott's link for you. Yeah, I'm not it's, finding it. All right, okay. Anyway, if you go into Scott's channel, guys, the blue light turner, 
you'll find his link, you'll find the link there. Um, I'm sure it's there. If it's not there, he hasn't put it up yet. Maybe he hasn't got up there. Uh, so. But certainly it's, it's easy to find. Just um, go into uh, YouTube <clears throat> and type in the blue light turner. Uh, it will appear. Yeah. On his channel, oh. just on the link. Uh, Mark, Mark says he knows what the questions ah. are for tomorrow night and it's unlikely. Oh, is that right, Mark? We shall see. Hmm. Is it? Right, that's it, guys. It's half say, past two. Uh, Scott's I'm, not I'm... got a link up yet. Oh, it hasn't got a link up. All right, okay. So um, I've told you where to get to him, so up to you now, guys. Work away. Thank you all for coming in, guys. Uh, I'm pressing the button now. Say goodbye, Pete. Bye. Bye. Say goodbye, Joe. Bye. So it's goodbye from them, Bye. and it's goodbye from me. Bye, everybody.